Who was the weirdest or creepiest kids at school, and why were they weird or creepy? There was this kid, when we were about 12 over 13 in science class that had a bad list. He was your usual weird kid quiet, didn't smell great, sat alone at lunch. Asked him what the list was one day. A list of people I need to punish was his response. I was so fucking nice to him after that. I'll never forget the kid who thought that he was a car. You'd see him zooming around school at lunchtime in car mode. Whenever he stopped running, he'd pretend to hit the brakes. He even beeped at people. This sounds like pretty standard behavior for a little kid, but this guy did it until he was 16. He left school last year and, not surprisingly, has his driver's license. There was this one kid in my high school that I had a few classes with. Once he came to class and he had carved the letter I into his cheek with a razor blade, he said the I stood for individual. He was sent home for the next few days. Another thing he did was for secret Santa his gift was old finger nail and toenail clippings of his, since he wanted to give a part of himself. I felt bad for the guy, he wasn't mean or anything, he just had some fucked up issues going on in his head. There was this guy named Josh in my elementary school. I guess you could say he was a dark character. He always wore trench coats and would always look at the ground. He had this creepy smile and just gave everyone the heebie-jeebies. He tried to add me on MSN one day and his ML address was to girls don't say no. This was in grade 6 or 7. Needless to say, I never spoke to him again. Brendan from Spanish class. He would pick at his acne that was on his face, neck, and back. And eat it. Eat it. The dead skin, blood, puss, everything. Then one day we were all switching seats, and I sat down in Brendan's old seat. The seat was very warm, and I mentioned it to the person sitting next to me. Then I make eye contact with Brendan, and he whispers you're welcome. There was this girl in my elementary school that believed she was a stripper. Not only did she strip naked in class, she used to spit everywhere, and she pissed in the bag of marshmallows we were using for s'mores. We did not get s'mores that day. I realized she was autistic when I reached a knowledgeable age, but when I was young I thought she was stupid and annoying. Haha, <laughs> that was me. At the age of around 11 or 12 I had very few friends, and spent every break slash lunch time walking around in circles in the playground. It must have looked incredibly odd, but I was just imagining stuff. I had a very vivid imagination as a child, and never understood social skills etc. Didn't help that everyone in the town knew about my crappy home situation so nobody wanted to have much to do with me. I was known as the ugly kid who walked in circles every single day. My parents were trying to get me into a class called basic skills. I thought it was because they wanted me to be better at math. A week ago, a friend I went to high school with told me that basic skills was designed to teach the creepy kids how to be normal. Thanks, mom and dad. There was this kid in my 11th grade class that had been homeschooled up until that year and was extremely socially awkward. In one class our teacher randomly paired us up, and we had to interview our partner, and then make a poster educating others about them. Really stupid project, and I got paired up with this kid. During the interview he asked my favorite food, which at the time, was chili cheese fries. Fast forward to next week, when the project is due and this guy shows up with a massive poster, shaped and decorated to look like a giant plate of chili cheese fries. Like a 5 apostrophe x 5 foot cardboard cute out of cheese fries with glitter and 3D effects and everything, with my name written in huge letters across the top. I was horrified. My best friend and I were the weird creepy kids in my high school. We were the only two people who dressed goth in the entire school. Mind you, we went to school in a small rural town in Texas. Several students would avoid coming near me in the halls for fear I'd put a hex on them, thinking I practiced witchcraft. My friend experienced similar results from his attire as well. The reason? I was raped when I was a sophomore. I started wearing all black because it fit my mood when I was dealing with the aftermath. I would tried talking about it to several friends, but given the fact it was a small football oriented school in town and my attacker was one of the star players, I was treated worse than garbage by friend and classmate alike. I started dressing in ways that sweeted my moods and lo and behold, the town's first goth kid was created. My friend, pretty much my sole friend who didn't turn on me, noticed the effect that my dressing, 
that way had on the southern baptist populace they avoided me like the plague and left me the hell alone. Back then, I was the only person in our school who knew he was gay. However, he was heavily bullied. So he adopted my general style of all black and became our school's second creepy goth kid. We enjoyed the results nobody messed with us anymore. We started adding pentagrams and weird symbols and the like to our wardrobes, which increased the effects. Occasionally one of the jocks would decide to bully my friend and I would walk up behind them, clutch one of my necklaces, and start chanting in gibberish. It usually resulted in the bully getting scared and running away. The teachers and administration never gave us crap for it, because we were straighter students, and were always sweet as can be in class. I think the majority of them understood that we were responding to a shitty situation in the only way we had. Way back in middle school there was this kid named Derek. He was brilliant, or it seemed so at the time with his school work. He was on honor roll every semester. He was short and anorexic, and he never said a single word to anyone that was deemed social. One day I decided to talk to him, and we shared an interest in music and TV shows. I ended up going to his house one day after school and my god I never went back. His entire room was filled up with drawings of dead and lynched black people. All he could talk about was his hatred towards minorities. And it turned out his father was a part of the KKK. This was in Chicago, Isle. There was this kid in my high school, who always wore a leather jacket, stunk something fierce, mix of cigarettes and bee. Oh. And he always had greasy black hair. Not sure if he just didn't shower, or put grease in it to look cool. People called him Greased Lightning. He was generally a nice guy, but he was also known for having anger problems, and flipping out at teachers and other students regularly. One day in art class my friend mocked him, and called him Greased Lightning. And he jumped on my friend's back and stabbed him half a dozen times in the neck with a pencil. Don't worry my friend is okay. Two stick out in my mind. One was a kid in high school. He had all the hallmarks of your standard issue socially awkward nerd. In that he couldn't relate to people his own age. Had no idea how to blend into a crowd. And was quite smart. The problem was that he also had a temper and would fly off the handle when people teased him. After a while he became the target of the few very nasty bullies, because they wanted to watch him flip out. He flipped out alright, he hit one of them in the face with his math textbook, spine first. Broke the bully's nose. This was right after the Springfield and Columbine shootings, so everyone was on edge around the kid, afraid he'd go over the line. He disappeared at the end of junior year, and we never saw him again. The second guy was in college. He was another stereotype, but this time it was the stereotype of the large drunk stupid redneck. Always spoke with a pronounced drawl, even though he grew up here in Portland. Had very conservative and loud opinions about anything, and most of it was a regurgitation of stuff from Fox News. He was also, sadly, a member of my fraternity. What made him creepy was when he got rejected by a girl in the journalism department. He took it very hard, but it soon became a victim complex with him. He thought everyone was out to get him. His misspace tells you how long ago this was. Posts started to get weirder and weirder. Talking about how people hated him, how frustrated he was, how he wanted to just make them stop. We grew concerned, started watching him closely. Then the shooting at Virginia Tech happened, and we realized that what he was posting was a sanitized version of what Sumne Chui Cho had been writing slash recording. We finally called in the college administration when he posted, and I'm quoting verbatim here, RV Mariah would make a great soundtrack to a shooting spree. It really inspires creativity. The college turned that over to the cops, who got a warrant, and searched his house. Confiscated several guns and a ton of ammo, plus several notebooks full of hate writings about the students there, drawn plans of the school showing shooting angles, and lists of people's names. He was held under a mental level for some time, but never charged with a crime, he really hadn't committed one, yet. He moved to Arizona some time after that, and I haven't heard of him since. This really weird kid came to our school when I was in grade 11, he was a year under me. He always walked with a lurch, and was really loud spoken by nature, which didn't help, since he always talked about the most fucked up stuff. He would always make Chewbacca noises too, and we was exceptionally good at it. You'd just be in class and you could faintly hear the grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
he would always butt in on every own's conversations too. I would just be talking to my friend and he would just appear in our social circle, just standing, waiting, listening. Just a really strange kid. There was also that omnipresent anime obsessive girl who wore cat related accessories and periodically acted as a cat herself. She would show up to school in full cosplay from time to time as well, and she always had mysterious shipments from Japan still in the shipping box that she'd bring to school. She was also very strange. There was a kid in my high school who had Asperger's and a long history of sexually harassing girls, touching himself behind them, stalking, sitting at the preppy girls table at lunch because they didn't have the heart slash spine to say no, raising his hand to ask completely irrelevant and or morbid questions, and letting his bodily functions happen right in the middle of class while vociferously denying. It was him. Talented artist, though. I was the creep. In 3rd grade, 1997 for me, my parents bought me a hot pink and purple pencil case. Every day before school I made an effort to get there early, so I could spend some time on the playground and grass area. I would spend all of this time immersed in my obsession, to collect as many ladybugs as possible, to put them, and nothing else, in my hot pink and purple pencil case. On a good morning I could easily get 25 plus ladybugs captured and secured within my pencil box prison in 10 minutes time. Phase 2 of my plan involved filing into my classroom nonchalantly and getting set up at my desk. I crammed everything I needed for school in the small upper part of my two bean school desk. The bigger section underneath was where I kept my pencil case. Alone. I would stare at it longingly, knowing that only I knew that it was in there, waiting. Phase 3 usually came very quickly after phase 1, as I have no self control. I can't maintain my spaghetti over ladybugs. Boredom would set in. Or maybe it was a fleeting feeling of anxiety about my friends in the box. I would stealthily reach into my desk and open the pencil case. Sometimes I would prop the pencil box open with a cerulean colored Crayola. I digress. Phase 5. Ladybugs everywhere. Everybody would panic in the beginning. But as this turned into a routine thing for me, eventually everybody came to expect and accept the plague of ladybugs in the classroom every morning. Ming. Ming had a lot of issues. Alert were temper based. Every single time you would see him in the hall, he would be power walking reading some manga comic not looking up once. Or he would be running down the halls parkering. That shit running along the walls. One time in my class he was upset he got a 92 and threw his desk across the room and it mailed a kid in the head. I miss Ming. My high school had a boy one grade above me who had some sort of mental issue. I only ever saw him in the cafeteria, so I don't know if they put him in regular or special classes, but he would constantly talk, out loud, to nobody, in a variety of voices. No one ever sat with him, the bullies all just ignored him, and no one really discussed or acknowledged him. His chosen table was right next to the one my friends and I would congregate at, and I think I eventually decided he was reciting lines from some movie or TV show that I'd never seen. He approached me once to ask a question about a service dog I happened to have at the time, which startled the hell out of me because he'd never appeared to be actively looking at anyone, and I just figured he was content in his own world. It was a shock to realize he could vocalize his own thoughts and that he would do so voluntarily. I'm not sure he entirely understood my answer, though. On that note, I guess I was another weird kid because I was one of the disabled ones. Was fun. A former high school buddy of mine was pretty much known as the weird kid. He would come to school wearing a Lonsdale shirt. In my country Lonsdale is usually worn by Nianazis, a Carol canny pant, usually worn by wannabe gangster and actual gangsters, and traditional wooden shoes on his dirt bike without a jacket in the middle of the winter. So that's one reason why he was considered weird. Also if you pull his hair it would fall out, and he was pretty rich, so he always bought everybody free stuff. Great guy. We had a nutcase at my school. She would get obsessive crushes on people and go way over the top to try and get their attention. For example, she once cut her arm in art class and used the resulting blood to write the name of the unfortunate object of her affections on the wall of the corridor in two foot letters. She refused to go to lessons unless her unwitting beau told her directly to do so. 
It got to the point where she wouldn't do anything unless he told her to. She'd just sit in the playground. The flip side was that she would do pretty much anything he told her to do. G lick the floor, crawl around on all fours for the entire retty of lunchtime. I once saw her sitting on the floor amidst a crowd of what must have been about half the school just queefing. Fanny farting all over the place for about half an hour, used to make up ridiculous stories about herself and then defend their veracity to the point where, if you questioned them, she'd go psycho and start screaming until whichever poor sod had attracted her laser beam focus that week could be fished out of his lesson to tell her to stop. She was pregnant with Anakin Skywalker's baby, her invisible boyfriend lived in a tree, she was a lion, raw, she was a vampire etc. Fucking batch it. When I was in high school one of my friends, a 20 year old junior, that was extremely dirty and creepy, ate lunch and got a glob of mayonnaise on his cheek. Since he was so nasty and creepy, he never wiped his mouth, or bathed or any of that kind of inconvenient nonsense, so when I saw him before school the next day, he had this transparent yellow glob on his cheek. It was still there when school let out that day. The dude also had crabs, and would scratch around with his hands down his pants, and after pulling his hand out he would have 5 or 6 lice under his fingernails. He would showcase his crabs, to impress the chicks we hung out with at lunch. Good times.